So let's understand the first topic that is what is PLC? Well PLC is a commonly used term for product life cycle. The innovation of a new product and its degeneration into the common product is termed as the life cycle of a product. Generally every product goes through the same life cycle though the size and the speed of each particular stage can differ. The typical stages being the introductory stage, the growth stage, the maturity stage, the saturation followed by the decline. Let's understand each of these stages in further detail. Well, the first is the introductory stage. This is the stage of the cycle which could be the most expensive for the company launching a new product. The size of the market for the product is very small which means that the sales are low although they would be further increasing in the following stages. On the other hand, the cost of things like research and development, consumer testing and the marketing need to launch the product can be very high, especially if it is a competitive sector. Followed by the introductory stage is the growth stage. This is a stage typically characterized by a strong growth in the sales and profits and because the company can start to benefit from the economies of scale in production, the profit margins as well as the overall amount of profit will increase in this level. At this stage, the sales and the profits increase at an accelerating rate. This makes it possible for the businesses to invest way more money in the promotional activity to maximize the potential of the growth stage. Followed by this, we have the maturity stage. During the maturity stage, the product is well established and the aim for the manufacturer is now to maintain the market share that they've already built up in the growth stage. This is probably the most competitive time for most of the products and businesses need to invest wisely in any marketing activity that they undertake. They also need to consider any product modification or improvements to the production process which will give them a further competitive advantage because a lot of competitors would have already stepped in in the maturity stage. Next being the saturation stage. Well, this is not typically a separate stage and can be mostly clubbed in with the maturity stage. However, this is a stage which is typically characterized by wherein no more potential or new customers are remaining for our product. That is, only replacement sales take place. All the people who are interested in a product or who would be buying a product are already buying it. As in, sales have already hit their peak and now are at their decline. Nothing much can be done at this level to actually get in new customers. Followed by this level, we have the decline stage. Eventually, the product will start to shrink and this is what's known as the decline stage. The shrinkage could be due to the market becoming saturated. That is all the customers who have already willing to buy are already purchasing. That is only replacement sales taking place and no new sales taking place. Or because the consumers are switching to a different type of product or to a competitor's product. While this decline may be inevitable, it may still be possible for the companies to make some profit by switching to less expensive production techniques and cheaper markets. Having said that, let's have a closer comparative analysis between the sales, profits, competitors, customers and cash inflow along the various stages. Well, as you can see in the chart, it's a typical graph which First, in the product development stage is way below the zero level and then finally takes a line hype up and finally again falls down. Let's understand what does this stage really mean. Well, the four stages being the introductory, the growth, the maturity and the saturation stage can be clubbed together and finally the decline stage. Well, over here, the sales, the first element being sales. In the introductory level, the sales are at its very low. Whereas in the growth level, sales are increasing at an accelerating rate that is fast growth sales. Whereas in the maturity and the sales, in maturity and the saturation stage, also the sales are increasing, but at a decelerating level or at a slower level. And finally, at the declining level, sales are at a most peak following level and it's at the bottommost level. Following the similar pattern is that of a profit. In the introductory stages, profits are negligible or negative for that matter. In the growth stage, profits hit it at peak level and are growing at an accelerated level.
whereas in the maturity and the saturation stages profit starts to decline and finally in the decline stage profits are at its lowest peak next being the cash inflow element in the introductory stage the cash inflow is neg negative whereas in the growth stage it's at a moderate level contrary to the previous points at the maturity stage the cash inflow is at its highest whereas in the declining level it's at its lowest level with regards to the number of competitors operating in the same product as ours in the introductory stage there are few or negligible com competitors whereas in the growth stages the competitors have come in and are at a growing number whereas at a maturity level the competitors have completely taken over the market as along with us are, are at a maximum level and in the decline stage even the competitors have left the market or are at a declining trend finally with regards to the customers in the introductory stages the customers are very few and only the innovative and the ones who are ready to undertake risks are our customers whereas in the growth stage we have a mass market so followed by the maturity and the saturation wherein it is a mass market followed by only the replacement sales and in the declining stage we have laggards as our customers